G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Today I'm about to start putting hairspray onto my science fiction ship. So in my last update, which was part 7 I believe, um, I had painted everything a lovely sort of rusty tone and it's all ready to start doing overcoats and chipping mediums. Um, and I was thinking to myself, I had recently done uh, I had recently done a bit of a test where I compared three chipping mediums. I compared an AK Interactive chipping medium, I compared this Vallejo chipping medium, and I also used just hairspray. Um, I'll show you some photos here of the two contenders that I had, which was between Vallejo and hairspray. I'll show you now. And at first I was thinking that I was going to go with the Vallejo because, you know, it was a really lovely effect. And I thought, uh, you know what, I actually want chipping and scratches rather than a kind of worn, sun-worn, long weathering effect. Um, so I want it to look more like it's, how to describe it, rather than it's been out in the sun for months and decades without, years and decades without it being at all, you know, maintained. I want it to look like it's just had a really hard life, like it's been, you know, a fairly short lifespan, but a really tough time. In which case, this is the effect that I'm really after. And that is the hairspray, and not the Vallejo. So, I'm going to stick with my tried and true method, which is hairspray. But the main difference from what I've done previously is that when I did my tests, I learnt that Oh my goodness, it makes such a difference. Lots of thin coats, or just one or two thin coats, make such a difference compared to glooping it on really thick. Um, I found in particular, the last time I did this, this here gives you an indication. So, this was fairly thinnish on this side, and it comes off really nicely. It chips really beautifully. On this side, you can see where it sprayed on a bit thick, and it actually kind of glooped and pulled down here, so it kind of dripped down a little bit as it dried. And then the moment you wet it where that thick where that thick hairspray is, it just comes off in great big chunks and that's not the effect I want. So I'm really deliberately gonna not put ha thick hairspray on today. It's all about light coats, very, very light coats. So I'm out on the balcony. This here is my hairspray. It's nothing special. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful warm autumn afternoon here in Melbourne. It's lovely. Um, I'm gonna spray this really gently, so here's the hull. Can you see that? I hope you can actually. <laughs> I hope you can see this. This is perhaps a tiny bit more than I wanted to, but because there's so many different angles and surfaces here, it's really hard to get it all in a very light coating. That'll do. Yeah. I'm happy with that. The next piece I'm going to do is this, the little control cabin, and this is going to be much easier to do a light coating on because there's a lot less angles to work with. There, done. So I hope you can sort of see how glossy that is. I hope it's in focus. It's really hard to tell, sorry guys. I hope the whole thing hasn't been out of focus. If it has, you've got my massive apologies. Yeah, you can see it's, it's not too glossy overall. Yeah, there's actually bits that don't look like they got any. That's what you want. I mean, you want it to have some, but you want it to look like it's missed out almost. <sighs> that doesn't make sense. Bloody hell. Alright. Next piece is my communications mast.
And look, to be honest, the mast isn't going to get a lot of chipping, but the decking here will definitely get a lot of chipping. Because that would get a lot of wear on an actual ship. Right, next piece is the crane. So yeah, previously I would have really, really just glued it on and it would have been thick as, you know, almost a millimetre thick, which is terrible. Um, and it just, it comes off in such big chunks. Um, this way, fingers crossed, it's going to be a lot more controllable. Got a plane flying overhead, sorry guys. That's everything. One more. Good luck. Right, we're getting there. Next, the door, the cabin door. I don't know. Is this interesting video? Watching a man hairspray things? I don't know if it is. probably a bit too much. I hope you can see there just how kind of how glossy this is. So that's probably a tiny bit too much there. The uh, roof of my lighthouse. I'm going to stop now because you guys get the idea of how much I'm putting on and how little to put on, I hope. Plus the planes are getting noisier. I'm going to stop now. Right, well, I'm ready to start putting paint onto the seahorse. Actual paint, paint. So, got my two colours here XF23, which is light blue, and XF8, flat blue. And luckily, way, way back when I painted some of the rudders and things, I actually wrote down the formula. I'll show you here. Awfully glad that I wrote that down because I would not have remembered that from four months ago. <laughs> Five months ago almost. Oi. So, I'm going to get stuck in. Um, I've had a big think about the colour scheme. There's the cat joining me. Had a big think about the colour scheme and got some feedback from you guys on a video. And so I'm going to do the hull and this kind of plate here and the top of the lighthouse in the blue colour. And the rest is going to be a sort of off white. So I'm going to move the cat so I don't get any fur in there and then get stuck in. Uh, the light's getting a little dark out here but I've finished the blue. Um, it perhaps looks a bit more vibrant on screen than it does in real life. It's a little bit more washed out, it's not quite so lurid. But as you can see I've left a couple of panels blank to paint them on another colour. Uh, I've left a few patches very very lightly sprayed this looks very blue. I think there might be some kind of colour correction kicking in on my camera. Um, here's the top of the lighthouse and you can see I've even left the rust showing through in a few patches there. And that will just make it easier when I do come to scrape off the paint. Uh, it'll make it easier to get that kind of sun-worn look that I would like on the upper surfaces. Um, yeah, I'm using Tamir enamels because I love Tamir enamels. Uh, I hope that I can seal all this in with some water-based varnish and then I can do some oil weathering. If you do oil weathering on top of enamels it just kills it. Uh, the, the, the spirits that you use to thin the oils just destroy the enamels. Um, usually you can only do oil washes, pin washes, uh, what am I saying, dot weathering, bloody hell. Normally you can only do oil dot weathering on top of an acrylic paint job. But I hate using acrylic paints, it's just, you know, I prefer enamels, they're my favourite. So, I'm going to leave it at that for now, let the paint dry, and then start thinking about masking off some kind of white stripe through the middle, as well as painting all the superstructure white. Well, it's exciting times. Well, it's time to do some masking. But I just need to work out exactly where I'm going to mask. Um, because there's a lot of surface detail on this hull. So I'm thinking 
maybe sort of follow the line of that and that line, so get that stuff, half of those little sort of brackets poking out through there, catch in the little bottom bit of that surface, and then a little bit of that. So, yeah, it's tricky, um, but I think that's probably the best solution for me. You know, if I run it through here, it's just too many things going to get cut in half. So yeah, that's the plan. Let's see how it works. I'm going to attack it with the masking tape and show you the result. It's a long way from the best masking job I've ever done, but I think the edges are fairly parallel, and I think it will work for me. Once again, just like the railings, it's lucky I'm going for a rustic look on this, not too polished. <laughs> um, daylight saving has just ended here in Australia, and because I do all of my airbrushing outside, it means that when I get home, you know, kind of hang out with my family for a little bit, and then uh, there's no light left to do some airbrushing, so this will have to wait until the weekend. Bit of a bugger. Back to winter brushing. Poo. But yes, see you on the weekend. Finally it's the weekend and it's a chance for me to get outside and do some airbrushing. So I've got my masked off stripe that I'm going to paint red. First I'm going to do an undercoat of white. Um, I had thought, oh look, maybe I should you know, take the masking off and do sort of pre-shadowing and stuff like that on the blue, but you know what, it's there. I'm pretty sure I can make this work. If it goes horribly wrong, you heard it here first that I thought I could make it work. My main concern is going to be trying to sort of pre-shade blue close to the white or red stripe, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So, I'm going to get stuck in with the white and then do a top coat of red so it's nice and bright. I'll show you in a tick. So here's the white stripe. Look, it's pretty subtle, you know. It's, it's not that crazily different to the blue around it, but it's going to be enough to give me a little oomph to that red. So, now I'm moving on to painting the superstructure, which is all here, painted in rust tones and hairbrushed. Hairbrushed? Hairsprayed. Uh, so I'm going to go on and paint those white with like a little tiny sploosh of some buff in there just to make it a slightly dirtier white colour. So I'll get stuck into that. So as you can see, it's still quite a murky white. It's, it's not a big bright white. Um, it's actually you know, kind of visible bits of, let's get some focus, visible bits of Oh man, come on. Okay, that's better. Um, visible bits of brown sort of still visible here and there from the underlying rust, particularly sort of up around here. Um, and that's, I think, going to help me with you know, a dinginess. Next up, red for the stripe. It's quite a warm day here, so that's that white on the stripe is pretty much cured now, I reckon. Uh, I'm going to mix the red with a little bit of black just to give it yeah, a little bit of character so it's not quite too bright. This is a rundown ship after all. And here's the effect that I've been trying to achieve. So I've put the red stripe on and then I've gone over sort of the darker shadow bits with a mix of red with a bit of black in it. Now it might look a bit extreme here now. I'll take it into the sun and you can see it a bit more clearly. Oh, bright. Maybe you can't see it more clearly. Or maybe it's perfect, I don't know. Um, no, nah, that's a bit too extreme, isn't it? Bugger. All right, back into the shade. <laughs> Freaking out my camera. So yeah, that's much better. So you can see the effect of the sort of shadow where I wanted the shadow. It tends to be at the bottom of things or in those dark crevices there. And um, that's what I'm intending to do with the whole thing. The whole thing. So yeah, once this is dry, I'll peel that masking tape off. Hopefully we've got a lovely red stripe on there. Um, and then I can start doing the same with the blue. And mask off the red, I guess, so I don't get blue overspray, which is... Bit of a pain, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, alright. I'm happy with that. Let's move on. Day two of the weekend, Sunday, and I've just done a little bit of spraying of detail with a darker blue colour. So you can see on these sort of ridges, I've tried to highlight those a little bit. Uh, kind of darkened around the bottom, so where the shadows would be. Darkened around the bottom of that big bulge. Did a bit of a highlight on the top of this and a bit of a low light on the bottom. And I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy-handed, but it's just the first step. So this is kind of the equivalent. You can see there's some red overspray there. Bloody hell. 
have to fix that. This is the first sort of step of you know getting a bit of color modulation in there. Um, down the bottom, I've sprayed more sort of murky tones, shadows basically is what I've been painting. Um, yeah, what to tell you? I tried to mask off the bits of red that I didn't want to get because I knew I'd be painting pretty close to them. Um, you can see sort of shadows under there, a little bit of highlights on top, and. Yeah, it's, it's the very early stages, so there's going to be chipping involved, there's going to be um, some dot filtering involved, and that's going to be a bit of an experiment. I haven't done this before, uh, where I'm going to try and cover the whole thing in a water-based varnish and then use oil paints for some dot filtering, uh, you know, dot weathering. It might work or it might completely bite me in the bum, I'm not sure. But that's the plan at this stage, so I think the next step will be, for me, chipping, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Oh, I also did a few white highlights on these because I felt they were a bit too murky on some of the whiter superstructure parts, so sort of white highlights on the top of that piece there. They're subtle, they're not you know, strong and bold, but <laughs> look at my brilliant masking job. But yeah, just a few white highlights on the tops of things, again to emphasise shadows. So yeah, I think next step is chipping. Oh, and maybe some red on this guy here. But that'll have to wait till next weekend. Alright, it is time to start doing some chipping. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of the smaller pieces before I take my life into my hands and start on the big one. And I've got a glass of water here. And this is the hairspray technique. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen videos before. I've done a video specifically on the hairspray technique in the past. Let's zoom in a little closer so you can see the action. You can do this in the bathroom, you know, over the sink. It doesn't have to be completely drenched. In fact, you probably get more control by not completely drenching it. But we'll see. You know, if it doesn't start to crack and craze, then I'll know that maybe it needs to be dipped in the water a little bit more thoroughly. This is as exciting as watching paint dry for you guys. But yeah, um, I'm hoping to be able to show you how it happens. Watch the magic. I've got here a toothbrush, a toothpick, and a scalpel fairly blunt scalpel. Those are the three tools I usually use for chipping and it really just depends how stubborn the paint is being as to which one I resort to using. My preference is for the toothbrush, you get a really nice sort of mottled effect where it's more sort of sun bleached than scratched and beaten up but sometimes that just doesn't work and the paint's a bit more stubborn in which case I progress to toothpick and then finally scalpel. And with this one I'm not seeing any crazing or cracking, so I just put a bit more water on my fingertip and then put it back on there. Uh, I'm not seeing any cracking or crazing in that surface, which makes me think that this one's perhaps the uh, perhaps the blue paint is a little bit thick on this for it to easily kick off. So if you need to, you can always help it along a little bit just by scratching. Sort of once it breaks through that solid blue surface, it'll start to eat away at the paint surrounding it once it's got like a little root in. Also trying to be really gentle because you can see how much that's wobbling around when I just touch it with my scalpel. So I've just done a big scratch there. Is that actually in focus for you? I hope it is. It's about as good as we're getting. Come on, come on little fella. Alright, I'm going to come back to this because this is like watching paint dry for you lot. Back in a couple of minutes. That's been about two more minutes I would say. And... Yeah, look, it's not really... There we go, you can actually see it. It's not really chipping a huge amount right now. So, I guess that's good. It means it's not chipping too much. Um, you can see it's starting to craze a little bit here, but what I'm going to do is just dump that in my water glass, try and get the little bugger to actually 
start to react a bit more. My experience with uh, with chipping with the hairspray technique is that you kind of only get one shot. So once this is done, you know, do it all in one hit. Don't sort of start it, wet it, think, oh, I'll come back to it in half an hour, because that'll give you grief. Um, you kind of get one shot, and it's not like you have to rush, but you can't do a little bit and then come back to it tomorrow and wet it again. It's not going to work. You kind of get one one go at making the reaction work. So it's not to put the fear in you. It's just to yeah, let you know realistically that's your chance. So I'm just going to keep scraping away, mostly around the edges here. So what I have found is that, yeah, you know, naturally that would sort of chip around the edge. That's where it's going to crunch up into other vehicles or edges of wharves or ports or stuff like that. And I'm being really gentle, so, you know, the last thing you want is to get heavy-handed and take off your rust layer underneath as well, particularly if you're going at it with a scalpel. <laughs> Is this interesting? I don't know. Watching a grown man just, you know, gently scrape a piece of the plastic. Um, I guess the other thing I'm trying to be conscious of here is not to have all my scratches going in the same direction. That's also a very bad look. Yeah, keep it looking real. I might put a big scratch here. How does that look? Once again, I'm going to leave that for a minute more and just see if anything more reacts, but otherwise that might even be enough for me. Mm, I'll give it a minute more. It's still wet, so let's come back in a tick. One thing I am doing is just using the scalpel blade to scrape along the edges and get some realistic looking dings there. So you've, if you're at all not sure, you know, Look up some photos of earth movers and stuff online, or some you know weathered tanks and things like that, just to see where realistic scratching would occur and get a feel for how crazy you should go. That's pretty out of focus. Sorry, guys. Bloody hell. Look, it doesn't look much here, but I'll take a photo and show you how it's looking. So I feel like we're pretty close here. I'm not going to go too much crazier on the video. It doesn't look so strong, but um, I'll take a photo and show you in a tick. So finally, after about being damp for about five minutes, there are some sections where the crazing has started. So you can see, hopefully you can see, this bit here where there's kind of some bubbles, some blisters appearing in the paint. And if I just go in and bother those blisters, they peel off very easily. Down here it started, a little bit here started little bit more here so you can see that blistering effect and that's exactly what you want might even be some up here if I'm lucky so I don't want to push it too much further than this because I don't want it to look unrealistic but um, phew it finally worked <laughs> that's a relief so I could wet it a little bit more and those blisters will develop a little bit further but um, yeah that's what you're looking for those are the bits you bother with your scalpel blade or your toothpick and that's where it really works nicely. So this one, the toothbrush, not going to work. But your next one, which is this one here, and I've put the paint on a lot thinner, this one will be perfect for the toothbrush. All right, I'm going to hassle this a little bit further. Cool. I'm happy with that. Let me just get some light on that. So importantly, let's get focus, most importantly. Um, importantly, when you're happy with it and you're finished and you're done, dry it off because you don't want that water to continue reacting. I'm using some toilet paper here because I'm a classy guy. There we go. So I've kept it fairly subtle. 
can see how it looks. And there'll be more weathering to come. There'll be um, you know, a bit of a wash overall. Uh, I'll be adding a bit of rusty pastels to that, pigments to you know, do some sort of streaky rust. But yeah, for that, I'm cool. Alright, I'm going to move on to this piece, the top of the lighthouse. So like I said, this one, the paint, the blue paint is a lot thinner on this. I'm just going to dip the whole thing in, to be honest. And it might, there we go, might react really fast, or it might not, we'll just see. If it does, I'll just have to work fast. Or it might not. <laughs> and look, for all I know, you know, weather could play a part, I don't know. You know you just, this is what I love about this technique, is you don't know how it's going to go until you do it. And I love that, but it's a little bit hair-raising. It's a little scary. Ah, nothing's happening fast here. Right, I'm going to give it another dip. the camera. So I think I can already see, yeah, definitely, I can already see down the bottom here. The camera's struggling at quite this zoom, but I can see a couple of blisters appearing just here, maybe one just there. And I'm going to try and use my toothbrush this time. So I'm going to leave that for a bit longer until it gets nice and crackly. I'll come back in a tick. That's been about two minutes. Um, now I can see this area here, this big sort of strange blistery looking bit. I think what's happened there is that a glob of hairspray has kind of dry, so it's possibly sort of run down the side a little bit there and collected there in a little pool. And where there's bigger, thicker hairspray, it tends to come off in big chunks. So I'm gonna be very careful around that area, try and avoid it if anything, because I don't want just one big, empty gap in the middle. You can already see, I hope you can see, that's chipping off just beautifully with a toothbrush. Love it when it works. Oh, it's so good. So yeah, the lesson here is don't put your paint on too thick over the top of your hairspray. Oh, I love it when it works. This is fun. And I was really hoping for that sort of sun-worn, lots of paint, worn away, baked off look, rather than big chips and scratches on this. I'm not sure if that's staying in focus. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to try and not put my hand on top of it. Yeah, when it works. It's freaking brilliant. that bit anymore. Let's do it up here. This piece that I'm working on is uh, an old earbud from a set of headphones. You can see it if you know it's there. And I guess, you know, be, be gentle where you need to be gentle. Like, these pieces aren't that strong. They're fairly delicate. Try and get a little bit more off these guys, and then I'm going to call this a day, I think. This I might attack a little bit with the scalpel just to get some more pinpointed chipping. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's come off nicely. 
gives you an idea of how it works. So I'm going to get stuck into the whole thing and uh, show you a photo, but that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it with this painting video. Um, my next step is to drop the camera. My next step is to, once I'm happy with the painting and the chipping, I'm going to spray the whole thing with water-based varnish, so probably two, three coats, and then I'm going to try and do an oils dot filter. So the paints underneath are enamels. If it works, I'll be a happy, happy camper. If it doesn't work, you'll probably hear me weeping wherever you live. Um, yeah, I'll take a photo in a tick and show you how this guy looks. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.